church, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, the one who was, who is, and is to come. Can we put our hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we stand on our feet? How many are glad to be at the last day of 10 days of glory? How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight?
into the marvelous light of the Lord. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know who I am. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let me see clap those hands. Come on. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. Go for it.
as well as our online viewers. Do we have any visitors here tonight? Would you be so kind to stand? Yes, hallelujah. Thank you. As members of Connect Church, we take pleasure in this portion of our service where we, on behalf of our senior pastor couple, John and Bernice Marilek, welcome our guests to God's house. Thank you for making our home your place of worship tonight. Here at Connect Church, we are a mighty people of faith who seek the heart of God through worshiping, witnessing, and sharing the love of Jesus Christ with the world. We are a Bible-believing church, knowing that the word that will be preached comes straight from the heart of God for a time such as this. The word will also assist you to find the answers to the five most important life questions, which are, who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? With who am I? And why am I? We invite you to receive this word with an open heart and mind. If you came here tonight because you don't belong to a specific church, alternatively, if you don't have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, at the end of the service, when the altar call is made, we invite you to take that walk of faith and make our Savior your Savior too. And if you so choose, you are welcome to stay. If you're visiting from another church, we extend blessings of journey mercies and ask that you come back again thereafter as often as possible. Now, family, I invite you to rise and wave at each other. Thank you. Amen, amen. Do we have a faith people in the house? Hallelujah. Do we have a faith people in the house? Amen. I can hear these are people of faith. Hallelujah. Just touch your neighbor and say it's giving time. Amen, amen. And giving time is the best time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us uh, read the Word of God in the book of 2 Corinthians 8, as Apostle has read this morning, uh, verses 9. And it reads as follows. It reads as follows. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich. Say to somebody, he was rich. Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Hallelujah. You, you are so important that you become rich to Jesus. Poverty. Is there somebody tonight? Now I want you to, to, to declare with me this word. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I, Jesus became poor. So that I might become rich. I am rich. I am rich. Come on. I am rich. God bless you as you take out your seed and give hallelujah. The Bible declares, I press toward the mark of a high calling. Forgetting the things that are behind me. I press toward the mark. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can stand to our feet. I press toward the mark of a high calling. Yes, I press toward the mark. Yeah. 
and mighty to deliver. David says, Father, whom have I in heaven but you? There's nothing on earth I desire besides you. Can I see who want to be where Jesus is tonight? Hallelujah. Father, we need your glory. We need your love. We need your peace. We need your favor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we will do anything for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your glory, God. Without you, we are nothing. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Oh, Lord, if I find favor in your sight. Lord, please hear my heart cry. I'm desperately waiting to be with you. I'll cross the hardest stairs. I'll tread the
Let's lift our hands for your glory. For your glory. Come on, let's raise our hands. I would do. I would do anything, God, to be in your presence. Behold you as my king. To behold you as my king. For your glory. For your glory.
say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My Can we say all of my worship? All of my worship. Said all of my worship. All of my worship. And I will serve no foreign God. All of my worship belongs to you. If he's worthy of your praise, lift your voices. All of my worship. All of my worship belongs to you. All of my worship. All of my worship belongs. What an awesome presence. What a powerful experience. I have this kind of challenge now. And the challenge is this, that how can Jesus say to this woman, the Father is looking for. He's, he's looking for true worshipers. I mean, God doesn't need nothing from no one. He, he has, but there's one thing that God is looking for. Even though he does not need anything from nobody, there's one thing that if you do that, honored and blessed to step into the holy of holies and the one thing that I agree tonight with the songwriter when he says all of my worship to you all of my worship all of my worship all of my worship belong to her, the Father is looking for true worshipers. And tonight I believe if we are, and I declare that we are in faith, we are true worshipers. God is going to step into your space. He's going to step into your life. He's going to step into your situation tonight. And He's just going to release Himself his favor, his blessings, his kindness, his limitless love. What an honor tonight. And before you sit, can we just be so kind as to welcome all our online viewers. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We are just so blessed to have you with us. are just so, so, so thankful. We know you are tuning from different corners of the country and we just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Then to those of you who are honored to be here. It is so good to see us. I said to myself, this is truly going to be Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Even those who are not Pentecostals, they believe that there's a Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. And tonight it is my great honor 
blessing, privilege to invite to the podium my dear brother and friend in the Lord, Pastor Raymond Lefrier. Be so kind as you welcome him to come and minister the Word of God. Hallelujah! Let's give it up for our God and Savior. He's a wonder in my soul. He is a wonder. Lift your hands in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Raise your hands, somebody. He is a wonder in my soul. He is a wonder. In my soul, he is a wonder. In my soul, bless his name. I don't know about you. I said, I don't know about you. He is a wonder. In my soul, he is a wonder. In my soul. seated in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. What a blessing and an honor. We can truly say how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. It is like the oil the anointing that flows from the head, even to the beards, even to the skirts of Aaron. For there the Lord commands His blessing. I say you are ready for a commanded blessing tonight? Give the Lord a hand of praise tonight, somebody. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We'd like to honor the Lord tonight for the privilege and honor of serving you tonight. Amen. Amen. It's not but listen to it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? listen but men say what lekker eat is lekker for hulle kost na baal. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Ooh, my God. The Lord is good, isn't it? Yeah, the Lord is faithful. He's awesome. He's mighty. And I'm telling you tonight that your life will never ever be the same again. I say your life will never ever be the same again. I say your life will never ever be the same again. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'd love to greet my friends, my brother and sister. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And I need you to give them. Acknowledgement. So if you want to say, 
Rarig waar ik jou hart het, nee. Kom schief hulle een lekker aanklop, vir die mooie werk, wat hulle hier doen, vir die Heere. Amen. Amen, somebody. Baie dankie. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Amen. The Lord said to the lady, I think I ministered that word here, the Lord said to the lady at the well, if you but only knew the gift of God, Die Afrikaanse jong lekker, ek weet ons, ons, ons is online, maar die Afrikaanse jong lekker. As jy maar net die gave van God geken het, en as jy maar net geweet het wie dit is wat met jou praat. <laughs> My God. Alright, so I acknowledge them in Jesus name. Die woord van die Heere sê, hy wat kom nie dier die dier, hy is a dief in a rover. Is hy die woord van die Heere? Say he that if you don't come through the door, dan is jy rover. Die Bible sê die herder is die deur tot die skape. Ja, nee, ons kom die hulle. Ek is jy rover van aan, die prijs. God, come on now somebody. Are you blessed to be here? And uh, be so kind to give my wife also a hand, amen. Honor the Lord for her. Glory be to God. Amen. Het gaat hem lekker wezen. Soos ek jy moest nou sê, het is om te eet. If you really have an appetite, you're going to be happy. You know? People that love me teach and preach is people that love the word. If you love the word, you'll enjoy every bit of it. If you don't love the word, you came for a religious experience, dan gaat ek jou irriteer van nou af tot die einde. But if you love the word, you'll enjoy it. Amen? And I tell you, I really mean it from my heart that it is the last time, it's the last time that anybody will see you like that. Tonight is your night of change. You might as well mark it on your calendar. I say tonight is your night of change. There's a word I believe, you know, I've, I've had the privilege and the honor of serving the body of Christ for a few years. Amen. And I've noticed that whenever the Lord places a word in my spirit, or He gives me a word, and certain invitations come, then I know that the Lord wants me to share this. Most of the times, not all the time, but most of the times, He wants me to share it with the body. And that the body also needs it. And so it's normally those times, amen, that I'll get invitations, and I know it's because the Lord wants that word to be released. Sometimes you seek the Lord, asking the Lord what you need to say. But as you go along, you find out. How many of you know what it means to be nudged by the Spirit? <laughs> Come on now, somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's going to be so good in this place tonight. Amen. All right. So I'm going to take it a little bit further. I've delivered this word already, but I'm going to take it a little bit further. Not here, I didn't deliver this word here, but it's something the Lord placed in my spirit. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and honor of sharing your word. Now, Lord, I thank you. I heal to you tonight. I ask of you, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Seal this place with your blood and your glory. I submit under you, and I resist everything that is not of you. And I expect the devil to flee. I praise you tonight, Lord. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, I am nothing and you are everything. Father, no glory belongs to no man. All glory belongs to you. Let the people only glorify you. I praise you tonight, Lord, for the privilege and honor. And all God's people that believe that shout amen. Well, let's get into the word. It's going to be liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Mitzah. It's going to be good. Family, um, I'm telling you now that the times in which we live, the times in which we live right now, the season in which we live, and more particularly referring to uh, this COVID 19, this coronavirus, whatever it's called, has affected the church. We don't want to talk about it, but it has affected the church. 
It has affected the church, and we need a word from the Lord. Can I get a louder witness? Yeah, bless her. For where the word of the Lord is, that will good disappear. Iemand skree saam met my, is a woord van die Heer af. Glory be to God. Amen. It has affected the church and we need to talk about it. Amen, somebody. Yeah, it has affected the church. And the whole idea is just to shut you down. Dis ek om jy vanaan sit met a masker om jou mond. It is to shut you down. This whole thing, if you look at the entire process, is a shutting down. It's a shutting down of the church. It's a shutting down of the economy. It's a shutting down of your declarations. It's a shutting down of your authority. But the devil is a liar. No one is shutting me down. Are there some people that can help me tonight? It's a shutting down tonight. Yeah, and we need to talk about it. Amen. Glory be to God. We need to talk about it. You see, the impact that, the ch- that this season have had on people's lives on a spiritual basis I'm talking amen it's like a mass production of backsliding people it's like backsliding means of what mass produced but I tell you right now I didn't come to discourage you I came to let you know and present unto you that his power is still available come on now somebody help me here I say his power is still available yeah, you know, and let me tell you something that people have been, have been affected, church has been affected, pastors have been affected, church leaders have been affected, normal church people have been affected, houses have been affected, your money has been affected, your career has been affected. I tell you right now, but the devil is a liar. There is a God in Israel. I need somebody that can help me tonight. I say, that's a year in Israel. Glory be to God. Amen. So for the next few minutes, I'd love to talk to you tonight that it is time to enforce your authority. I need some people that can confess that with me. Say, it's time to enforce your authority. Say it with me. Say, it is time to enforce your authority. Yeah, the devil is a liar. It's time we shut him down. Yeah, it's time we shut him down. I say, it's time we shut him down. The devil is a liar. Glory be to God. Amen, somebody. Yeah, and so he's affected. This entire season has affected us. I mean, let's be honest about it. I mean, you know, generally, how we serve the Lord for many years, if you stay out of church, two Sundays, you feel it. Ek meen, as jy twee soon na die kek, onder normaal, ek praat nie van hierdie ding nie, ek praat normaal weg. If you stay out of church two Sundays, dan voel jy a klaar valle gal. Jy voel, come on now, somebody, jy voel jy sê by die here nie. Come on now, because there's something missing. Now, if you feel like that after two Sundays, under normal circumstances, just imagine what it does to people's spiritual lives in six months. Yeah, the church is in a place not realizing the impact. See what he's done? He's deactivated and immobilized you. Yeah, deactivated and immobilized you. Yeah. Now there are some people that go on. There are some people we go on. I mean, we go on, bless the Lord. I mean, as pastors, we were forced to go on. <laughs> Oscar, Day, we got shut down. Amen. We, 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 we did the recordings. So we went on. And therefore, you notice in churches that there's two groups Amen, within that church that's still functioning on that level. It is the worship team and the preacher. See, the difference between the worship team and the preacher and the people is because they've never been immobilized. They had to continue. You see, you must not think that your deactivation has no impact on you. Woo! It's a right for me. It's a for me. It's the Lord. Amen, somebody. Yeah, it's true. This is how it has affected, affected us. Amen. But I tell you, the devil is a liar. I say the devil is a liar. I say the devil is a liar. The grave is still empty. I say the grave is still empty. And I need to tell this virus that there is a power that's more powerful than you. And therefore tonight, just pray with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're rooting out this disease. I say we're rooting it out. 
We're rooting out the plague of the coronavirus out of our city. We're rooting it out of Pal. We're rooting it out of the province. We're rooting it out of this country. And we say in the name of Jesus, there is no place for you here. I say there is no place. I come against a third wave. I say in the name of Jesus, you have no authority. I need some people that can pray with me. Come on, just however many pray in the spirit. Malabo ko sitama, rela ya masanama, mea bo sitinime. Lord, we break that power. Lord, we break that power. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Shout out loud like you believe it tonight. Be seated. I say it's time to enforce your authority. It is time. Yeah. You can't even Aussie. Can't even Aussie. Who eh? I myself a noe? Can't myself a noe so? I say over nana. I can't even Aussie for Allah's fatty. Can I get a witness now? Let the redeem of the Lord say so. That the Lord is good and His mercy is endure forever. Muni mut my lolly. My God. Is she all right? Let me give you a few scriptures. That was if wordless. Quickly. From the amplified version of the Bible. I want to read this quickly. I want to get into this. Woo, the tight. The year of my name is Sean, let's still stand. This is powerful. I'm reading Ephesians 1, 15 to 20. It's a few scriptures that I'm going to read. See, when you deal with this kind of demon, you need to read the Bible. Read the Bible. Hallelujah. This is how you deal with him. You tell him it is written. Can I do that now? Mm -hmm. For this reason, Paul says, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. In other words, he says, listen, I know you believe in the Lord. I know you saved. I also heard of your love for God's people, which is the two greatest commandments, right? Your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with people. Paul says, I've heard that. I understand that you are saved. But he goes on to say, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. But I always pray, and this is now he's giving us the content of his prayers. He says, I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into the true knowledge of him. For we know the Father through the Son. In other words, I'm happy you are saved. But you need to transcend to another zone. Say, I, I've heard of your faith in Jesus. I've heard of your love for people. But I pray that you move to another. I say you're moving to another zone tonight. How many of you are ready to transcend? Yeah. I pray that, your life, that you will get a spirit. That you get, get a revelation. And the knowledge. That you move deeper into an intimate knowledge. He says, I pray. Listen now. That the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded. So he's praying for increase of insight. He says, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he's called you. Yeah, he says, I pray for that. He says, he says I pray in verse 9, eh, so that you begin to know. Remember, he's talking to people that already believe. He says, but I pray that you move from the belief of Jesus, the love for the saints to this place, that you at least start now to know what is the immeasurable, what is the unlimited, what is the surpassing greatness. I love the Amplified of his active spiritual power. Yeah, the active, not the passive, the active spiritual power. I love this. Listen now, is in us who believe. It is in us who believe. The power is available unto us. It is already residing on the inside of us. 
Ek men hierdie corona ding laat vir ons ding, ons het niks krag he. The way we act here is as if we've got no power. Somebody better help me shout and say, the devil is a liar. And then it goes on to say, because now he talks about active power. He goes into the next line. He says, they, these are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength. In other words, he's not a passive power. It's a working power. Oh, I say it's a working power. Yeah, you read them, Lenny Platy, you read them, move, brother. Can I get a witness now, somebody? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, he says, this power is a working power. He says, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Yeah, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rulers and authority and power and dominion, whether they are angels or human. And every name that is a common now, that is named above every title that you can be conferred. Not only in this age, but he's talking about 2021. He says, not only now when I'm talking to you, but 2021 in power as well. I hope there's people that can help me now. Yeah. Says, this power now is an active power. Talking about Pentecost. You shall wait in the upper room until you are endued with power from on high. This thing is about power. This thing is about authority. This thing is about active power working in us and through us. Ek sê vir jou vanaan is die duivel bang, ek sê jou. Ek sê vir jou die biewe vanaan, ek sê vir jou, hy wil nie vir jou laat kom met vanaan, maar vanaan is die aan. How many of you are ready? Are we together? Ja. Daar is die story. Ons het authority. See what the Lord was telling me is the following. He said to me, his operation, the forces of darkness that operate, their appearance of powerfulness is because of your lack of enforcement. Is there two women so what he saw? He saw my ass. See, the appearance that he krachtig like as my net your units is af. As al. He's not powerful. He's got the appearance of being powerful. Can I get you off bridge here in the panel? As he cut weg is, is he meisbaar. My wife and I had this discussion and she was telling me, she said, as ek sê vaak, kijk hier, soos die kat weg is, die meisbaas man. She said, my problem here is, die die woom sê, as die kat weg is, die meisbaas, she said, die kat is hier. Hey! Help me now, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not as if we are gone, we are still here. Ek meen, ek meen, as haar kat is en haar muis is, hy is die muis, oos is die kat. Come on now, somebody. How many of you know what I'm talking about? The Lord says the appearance of his powerfulness is because of a lack of the enforcement of your authority. He appears to be powerful because you are deactivated. I don't have time. Woo. See, the issue here is, family, this is what the Lord told me. He said to me, it's because we're fighting from a place of defeat. We are not fighting from a place of victory. See, your problem is that you're dealing with the problem because you're waiting to win. See, with us, this is not about waiting to win. See, this thing was done 2,000 years ago. This thing is about an enforcement. Somebody shout, I'm ready to enforce. Clint, give me a big Give me a big key. Give the mic, my brother. You make my muscles stick, my brother. Listen to this, family. Let's play the blood in here and here, long son. Listen to me. It's about enforcement. Listen now. Get up over here. Kijk hier. Listen. Nee, al het allemaal mee. Ik had al aan die hoofd. Ik was in die hoofd. Voor die pissigheid, voor die geraas, maar. Daar in die Weinberg, was in die hoofd. Ja! All of these summons have been made off like all of us. Because they're not off, brother, in Weinberg. But the Lord has said, but they're going to have to do the prayer. It's in the Bible. He's going to be good. It's in the Bible.
Some of you find it hard to laugh. It's actually a good thing. You must try it. <laughs> Listen to me, family. So now, so now, and this is important. We fight from a place of what? Defeat. We dealing with our situations as if even the church situation, even with church people. Right now, I'm talking about people that have been serving the Lord for years. Don't come to church. But we're dealing with it as if the status quo is the final situation. But I came to tell you in the name of the Lord, whatever your situation is that does not agree with this word, does not agree with what God planned for us, though that things don't have the final authority. I'm here to announce the final authority is what God says. It is what God's going to do. Can I get a loud witness? See, the point is, Luke says, is he all right? It would hard loop. Take my phone. Luke 10 and 19 says, I'm going to just run, run through it because for the sake of time. The Bible says, authority has been given unto you. Amplified says, the, th the authority which you now possess. In other words, you've been given authority, and I'd love to put it like this. It is not a ceremonial transfer of power. See, when you have a ceremonial position, you are in the position with no power. You are in the position with no right to enforce. See, your position is not ceremonial. Your position is an actual position. I hope there's people that can help me and shout, I'm full of power. Say, I'm full of authority. Says he's given unto you power, and then he says, over all the power of the enemy. The first word power is the word authority. I've given you authority over all powers of the devil. Not some powers. All powers. I mean, if he attacks you in your money, you got power over that. If he attacks you in your marriage, you got, you got power over that. If he attacks you in your family and your life and your child, you got power over that. If he attacks you in your career, you got power over that. If he attacks you in your studies, you got power over that. I know some people here that can help me shout and say, I am a powerful man. I say it's time to enforce your authority. See, I want to do the analogy of a policeman. But I have seen the policeman when I was a child. The thing that amazed me a lot was a mar policeman. I'm talking about he is thin. I tell you right now, I'm going to shoot the next day for you. I'd like I broke a tweak on my heart. He is, come on now, but he's thin. But I tell you, when he walks into a circumstance, he walks into that circumstance knowing that he's got delegated authority. That you must not look on his appearance because he understands what he possesses. When he walks into a situation, he's there to calm it. He's there to de-escalate it. He's there to change it. When he walks out of there, as I da kom, da se ook wat hy groot skoli. Ek nie om wat a rangte het in die tronkie. Sy klim in die van of sy gaat samen my. I know there's some people that can help me here right now that understand what it means to have what delegated authority. We enough as he means, I say it is time to enforce. Yeah. Yeah. He comes there to change the circumstance. He doesn't care who's got the knife. He's got nothing. He stop out and say myself. Except you, he stop out and say blow uniform, say badge, and say boya. Except you, as I da and come out, come I da and on my situation to change. I pray as you go out here tonight, you'll be a divine kingdom policeman. Carry your badge. Come on, out, somebody. I'm here to change the situation. Woo! It is time, the time has come for you to what? Enforce your authority. What's that mean, sir? What's that mean, sir? Right, here's the thing. He's got authority. The authority be given unto Jesus. Right? Yeah, all power's been given unto him. But the Bible, I don't have time. 
So I'll just throw out the scriptures because I need to get the word to you. Trust me, that is a word for you. Are you so no? The Bible talks about Ephesians 1 and 20. The Bible talks about what? This thing is about him being seated. Because the Bible says he's now ascended, exalted on high. Seated at the right hand of the Father. And then he relates it to the power he has. So the seat of authority has to do with the power of the devil. Because he says all power has been given unto him in heaven and in earth, in the earth and under the earth. But then he says over all the powers. And then he says, over rulers and darkness, and yaka dukum chiyas. I tell you right now in the name of Jesus, somebody shout, he's got the power. See, Jesus has the power because of his positioning. Because of what? Because of his what? Positioning. Yeah, it's a post. Yeah. Yeah, it's a post, yeah. I said to be recht op plek. I sit in his seat from authority. He sits at the place where authority comes from. If you feel any authority, it's in that seat. I came to tell you, not only does Jesus sit there, but you have been seated with him in heavenly places, far above all powers, far above all rulers, far above all rulers of darkness. Shout, I got it. It's because of what? Position. But the Bible then says, unto him has been what? Given power. Unto him has been given what? Given power. In heaven and in earth. Given power. So he doesn't only have the power as a result of his possession, but he has a power as a result of his possession. It is what the Bible says in Ephesians that I just read now, or Luke rather, 10, 19. He says, the power has been given unto you, he says in Amplified, the same power that you now possess. Yeah, yeah, I sit in the right place, and I get it by me. Can I get a witness now, somebody? I say I sit in the right place, and I get it by me. Woo! I saw a few men say, "What the curse for the evil?" I saw a few men say, "What the curse for the noses?" I saw a few men say, "What the for nanas yard?" Shout hallelujah, somebody! I say it's time to enforce it. Time to enforce it. You can't just possess it. Possess, possess. Enforcement. No, I don't have time. So, because of his position and because of what? He's possessing. But here's also something else where the, this power comes from. The Bible says in Colossians 2.15 that this power was given unto him because of the cross. But you see, the cross represents a fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. It represents a fight. It represents a fight. I tell you right now, he could have called 10,000 angels. Yeah, yeah. But he prayed this prayer. He said, yet not my will, but let thine be done. In the name of Jesus. Come on now, somebody. Because of the cross, meaning because of the conquest. That means because of the fight. So he's got the power because he was seated somewhere. Position. He got the power because it was transferred to him. Position. But he's got the power because he won the conquest. Ek dink jy hulle hoor vir my nie. Daar is sommige mense waar ek kry, want het word vir hulle gegee. Hy wat ek kry, want het maar klei vir die ding. Touch three people around you, say he fought for it. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Who said it means? Yeah, for you now. Yeah, for you now. He is in the middle of it for now. See from for now as he on, my brother. For now as he on. For now as he on. Are you okay? 
I want to read this to you, if you don't mind. I need to read this. Yeah. Listen to this now. I need to read this. Shame is the least. You got the power, you see. He produced this power when he raised Christ from the dead, seated him at the right hand of the Father, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion with the angelical human, and far above every name that is above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age, but also in the world to come. He put all things in every realm in, the, in subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as supreme and authoritative head over everything. Yeah, yeah, and even they said lungs on as a seat, it's a double seat. Is that even even we can help you? Are we together, somebody? Yeah, but I want to read this to you if you don't mind. Let me give you some scripture. Because scripture are you together? Yeah, let me read this to you if you don't mind. Let me read this. Hallelujah. The Bible says in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from Him. Be empowered through your union with him, says the Amplified. And Anabura, just as he is bold, you get bold. And he says, your boldness is based on your union. It's the fact that you sit there that you also have authority. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, be strong in the power of his might. Yeah, be strong in the power of his might. Say, come on, you are your name. Say, come on, you are your name. A law that I stop. He's like the policeman, you see. I don't have time. Who's going to look now? I put your clothes crop is local, he said, but I got to add up. I put the water crack. Listen to this now. It's like the policeman. He comes there, but he comes there with his uniform. He comes there with his badge. He comes there, come on, somebody, with the handcuffs. But guess what? You know why? Who come there, my policeman? I grew up in school. I come with delegated authority. He is not walking in his own strength. He comes there with delegated power. Delegated authority. It is time right now that you deal with the devil with delegated authority. It's time that you tell him, listen, I see you know I come to I don't have time, but the Bible says he made an open spectacle of them, and then the Bible says something else. He says he lead them captive. I don't have time. I want to stay with the analogy of the policeman. See, the way it looks today, the policeman come from school in the winter. I want to see you in the kitchen. The way that you look in the kitchen, the policeman says that the school is better. I know there's some people here that say to themselves, but they don't say that. Exactly. They don't repent. Because the reality is, he is leading the church captive. But he's the one, he's the one supposed to be in the van. You came to lock him up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say, he came to lock. You see, he seems like the one with authority. I'm telling you right now, he's standing right now. Come on now, somebody. I say, tonight, you're going to put him in the van. Tonight, you're going to cuff. I say, you're going to cuff him tonight. Can I get a witness now, somebody? Uh -uh. You better go home tonight, and you better tell him, Lester, for nine years, I come out of police, man, but for nine, I'm going you up. For nine, I'm you See, the reality is, Jason is in, I stand by the. I say, you know, I'm waiting, they said, I'm going to go to the event, 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 I hope there's somebody that can help me now. You see, what appears today, Pastor, it appears that he's got the authority while we are the authority. It appears, come on now, somebody, that we're supposed to be locked up. But he is supposed to be locked up. 
it appears that we've been disarmed but he is the one that's been disarmed somebody said i know who i am in the lord shout with me say i'm here to enforce my authority Woo! Ik denk, zij moet voor hem van naam zien. Kijk, die jaren toen ze kennis was. Ik hou nou altijd die pietje als hij school in die wijn gezet het. Daar rijden hulle oor die pijmen, mijn oom. Ik heb altijd gewonnen, hoe kon hij die wijn en oor die pijmen? Ik kan ons hier in die pad af rijden. Hij rijdt oor die pijmen. Als hij klaar is, hij rijdt oor die vel. Hij rijdt oor die... Hij man, hij val in die ronde. Die enigste ene van die school is wat sy wijf is. Die jongens met die lang arms. But I tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, tonight, Vanaan, wat ons moet om rij. Ons sluit hem op in the name of Jesus. And tonight is your night. I pray that you enforce your authority on your house. I pray that you enforce your authority on your finances. I pray that you enforce your authority on your marriage. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm enforcing my authority. Vanaan is hij aan. Vanaan sluit ik voor jou op. Woo! Say amen, somebody. This authority that we have, this authority that we have, is as a result of the elements of the fight. Yeah, yeah. This authority is because of the cross. Je laat me wat deze van lives kijken met Stephen. Die jong lig hy kruis so op, hy drijf vir die duivel uit man. Hy hou hy die kruis so, as hy vanaan gaat sê, hy kot hy kijk vir Stefano. Ek sê vir jou vanaan, sê vir die boodskap kruis. There's power in the cross. Somebody said there's power. Nee, ek maak gebruik van alles jongs. Hy gaat die hier uit gaan verstaan, sê nie. Als praat ek ook van thuis of haar lijf, sê gaat verstaan. It's because of what? The cross. It's because of the cross. But there's another power, Revelation chapter 2, 15, for they overcame him by the word of the testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. You see, we've got the weapons because we have the blood and we have the cross. Somebody shout, there's power in the cross. Say, I came to enforce my authority. Glory be to God. I say, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What did I come to tell you? I came to tell you, they would open for your houses, iemand wat die kracht het. Are you ready for the next one? Oh, Lord, it takes. Can I say something else? See, the church has a humpty dumpty revelation. The two men, the church have a what? See the Humpty Dumpty picture that my altered remind us not a cop in the bina. Yeah, that, that, that's the revelation the church has. Alva the lesson is a cop in the bina. Because now the Bible says that all power has been placed under his feet. But then the Bible also says he's the head. And all what I know, my bina is a connect and my copy, some of them also is by and by and But the reality is there's something in between. <laughs> I say there's something somebody shout there's something in between <laughs> say there's something in between because your legs is not part of your head the legs is part of the body which means if it's under the feet it's under you I say it's under his feet but the point is it's his body you see he's the head you the body but the feet is by you that simply means when he says it's under his feet, it means it's under you. I need somebody that are hungry to enforce it. I don't have time. When Paul says, I pray that you will have an increase and in intimate knowledge about the structure. Understand how it works. It's as if Paul says, get away from the Humpty Dumpty revelation and get to a place where you understand that you are right in between from where Jesus is and you know where you get your power from and that the devil is under your feet. Shout glory in this place. How many of you are ready to enforce it? I say, how many of you are ready to enforce it? We need to go home now. 
We need to go right now. Oh, my Lord. See, he's got this authority and this power because of the cross. He's got it because his blood was shed. Then the Bible says another way that he got it, listen now, is because, listen now, of the cross because of its conquest. Because of his position. After, after his resurrection. But we can't get away from the resurrection. Because it's indeed the resurrection power that's been delegated to us. That means he got out of the grave. He opgestaan. As a graf is vanaan wat lieg is. Dan kan ek verstaan dat die duivel so remoer. Maar ek het hier gekom om vir jou vanaan te sê. The grave is empty. And because he got up. He has power over the resurrection. And therefore in the name of Jesus. If, you if you're struggling with your studies. You read but it never goes in. You don't have a method. You don't have a strategy. You struggle. You fail. Because you don't know how to deal with the information. You better go home tonight. And when you look at that books. You tell this demon. Your tape. I will say it. Your tape is over. I'm going to stay dignified. I tell you right now. You better tell him it's over now. Hallelujah. As from tonight onwards, I will succeed. Can I get a witness now? I know that he's busy in your house and you want to break your house apart and you are worried about your children and you say to yourself, Jere, moet toch even my so in die oor sit nie? Moet toch even my so embarrass nie? And you also ask, Lord, how can I be in this place when you paid the price for me? And you must know about six prophets out. Six prophets in a bitchy puyer. Mike Seal no for none in the name of Jesus. You've got the power. Somebody shout, I am ready to enforce it. Ready to enforce it. I say, I'm ready to enforce it. I'm not a powerless being. You better speak to that bank account and tell that bank account that he last to give it to you lake. I don't like this appearance. Hallelujah. You better start praying for your children. You better enforce your authority and tell the devil you can't have my children. You better tell him in the name of Jesus. I don't have time. I feel the power on me. In the name I say, you better tell him I'm here to enforce the authority. I say, I feel the glory on me, all over me tonight. I say, you better get home and tell the devil, your time is up. I'm here to enforce my authority. Woo! I don't have time. See, what made him triumphant, what made him triumphant, you see, it's not the absence of a fight. Because it's easy to show that you are victorious without the battle. Then he can do anything he wants. Anything he can do. Steak has to the problems come. And he's he's makkelijk. But you see, can I get a witness somebody? No, 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 that's not what happened. The Lord told me in the week. He said to me, you need to start praying over your children. You need to start praying over your church. And then you need to say over every house. And I pray that you take this prayer home. This is what you pray. Listen to me right now, somebody. You pray in the name of Jesus and you say. The divine assignment. Of my church. Overrule every assignment of the devil. If your child's name is James. You say the divine assignment over James. Overrules every assignment of the evil one. I tell you tonight it is high time. That you don't take this falling back. Sitting back with no power. As if your situation is the status quo. And the final word. I came to connect tonight to tell you it's not your final word. 
God has the final say. Woo, we must go. No, we must go now. There's no clan. No. There's no overs. Oh no, you go for tell. Do you not see Scully with a raise of Ivan? But you scully with a long arm. Yeah, when I can fast go. So you didn't even even recreate me. So that. The, the gangster with the log up. That's the guy that's going to survive the ride. But then the Lord said to me, go read the Bible again. Because I didn't strip him of his powers only. Go read it again. It says I disarmed him. I hope there's people that can help me and say, he's got no arms. Say he's got no arms. Listen. Hy gaat nie die reise waar hy vir, want hy het nergens om vast te hou nie, want hy het niks arm sê. Van naam gee ons om een rui. Help the somebody that can help it, and shout over your house, shout the blood of Jesus. Shout over your house, say the blood of Jesus. Shout over your business, say the blood of Jesus. Shout over your future, say the blood of Jesus. Shout over your marriage, say the blood of Jesus. Shout over connect church, shout the blood of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand, somebody. Shout glory in this place. And then I said to myself, oh well, if the Lord disarmed him, I wonder how is he fighting his fight? Since he has no arms. Until I heard that the demon is a person without a body. And he's a person that uses words. The way he fights you is with words. And you better watch him because the Bible calls him the deceiver. The master deceiver. That word deceiver and deception in the Greek means somebody who has the ability to mislead you with truth. In other words, he doesn't have to lie to you. He'll tell you the truth. And that's how he takes you away. They say, for homos, they say, eat progeny. They say, this honorable member, sit up your plaque. Can I get a witness now, somebody? Yeah, 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 yeah. See if I'm along you, see last the cable to me, Susan. See, a bit of a right, a lopy carrot, you see, the last the cable to me, see what you can I get a witness now, somebody? I say the Lord is about to change it. How many of you are ready to enforce it? Somebody shout enforcement. See, what Jesus did was he had the power. He went to the cross. The Father helped him. Oh, yeah. The Holy Ghost was with him came on him after he was baptized. He had the power. And it's the power that carried him through. But you see, he didn't have the power that was passive. He had the power that was active. Meaning in every situation he came, he applied the power. So you see, now you see when the police man have an event set in next market. He came out the event and he came out. Say for him along, say for now, he came out the event and he came out. Somebody shout enforcement. Shout enforcement in the spirit. I say, say enforcement. So I'm ready to enforce. We must go now. Five minutes. It's over snows for Paino. Johan was clear. I don't have time. I don't have the time. When I say I don't have time, you need to shout that you've got all the time. Listen to me, somebody. I want to leave you with this quickly. See, Pastor John, he stripped us. One of the powerful things that I see is the mass. And I ask myself, what does the mass present? The mass presents the coverage of the mouth, but it also represents the coverage of the nose. And so he takes away my projection ability. And he takes away my breathing ability. I don't have time here, man. We must go home right now. Your projection ability and what you're breathing.
ability. And that's why if you look at the church today, is people are not breathing. There's a shutting down completely. There's no connection in the spirit. There's no connection. There's no sensitivity. Come on now, somebody. There's a carelessness about God's work. There's, a, there's like a dung. Hello, hello, warini. Uh, they don't take ownership. They're not proud of the church. They're not moving mightily. They're not doing the works. Can I tell you something? Because I had a masker and a gears op jou gesit. Somebody say, I'm ready to enforce. I don't have time. And one of the things, your what? Your projection ability. Your ability to speak. Your ability to announce. I, say, I ask myself, what happens with my mouth? And then I notice that the chorus writer says that my mouth give God a praise. Is that I do? I mean, we don't know what's happening behind that mask. I mean, as awesome, as awesome, I'll worship you only because at least he's seen. <laughs> Nothing is happening. <laughs> but I tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, come on out, somebody. Because, listen. Because he stripped you of your projection ability. I don't have time. See, because if you don't come to church, you don't come into a collective union of praise. See, there's, there's something very powerful about praise. A kind of power that you can't compare with the word. No wonder whenever Israel went out, the Lord said, let Judah go first. Let the praise go first. It's what the scripture says. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I'm talking about the power of praise. See, when you start praising, things start lifting. I must go right now. Oh my Lord, I must close this thing. The Lord said to me, listen. The Lord said to me, he's given us what? The common of praise. What? For the spirit of heaviness. You see, this is not about your spirit being heavy. It's about the demonic spirit coming on top of you. And you know, this thing, it causes depression. It, it causes doubt. It, uh, you want to commit suicide because you don't have no appetite for life. But I need some people that say, but nobody is shutting me down. Blow that thing in the name of Jesus. Somebody help me shout in this place. When these fine gentlemen and ladies go on stage here and they start singing and praise the Lord, don't leave them on their own. Hallelujah. I say don't leave them on their own. Start clapping your hands. Start praising the Lord. Start speaking in a foreign town. Because nobody is going to strip me of my power. I don't have a ceremonial position. I have an actual position. I don't have a position without power. I have a position to enforce power. I know there's some people here that can help me and shout the Lord is good. Stripped us of our desire to praise. I don't have time now. This season has stripped the church of the desire to praise. But it's another thing he stripped. He stripped the desire to be in God's house. I don't have time right now. But you see, the house of God is the place of breakthrough. See, if your problems is not solved, at least you behold the glory of him. And you are forever changed from glory to glory. Because let me tell you something, you can never be in church and nothing happens to you. That's why you notice you notice, you notice the negativity if you are not here. Oh, you didn't hear me. You're going to get me tomorrow morning. I said, can, can I get a witness now, somebody? I say, that's why you notice the effect when you are not here. It's because when you are here, something happens. I'm on a tomorrow at 5 o'clock. I said, no, I coffee answered. I said, oh, you're not going to know. You're not going to know. I said, no, no. Listen, listen. That's why, listen now, 
That's why you feel the effect when you're not here. You see, because your absence show you the effect. But you pick up the effect because you're not here. But why don't you pick that effect up when you're here? It's because when you are here, something happens. You are being sustained. You are being grounded. You are being kept. You are being surrounded. In fact, you live under what the Bible calls a commanded blessing. How lovely it is for brethren to dwell together. It is like the anointing from the head of the Lord. Hey! Family, I don't have time. I must go. And the lame man, I want to show you something. He stripped us of our praise, but he stripped us of our desire to praise God, and he stripped us of our desire. See, what he tell me. If you're a real praiser, you don't wait for the worship team. Niemand switch for me and Eggers and Gaswitz. I'll sing it false. Eggers and Gaswitz. Except for your now a quirky IQ night. Exhale now, even now. Come on now, somebody. Because he shut down your praise, you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. He shut down our collective praise. Have you ever noticed when you're in church and they sing a song, how that song is in your heart for three days? You find the next morning, you walk around, suddenly you start to sing. But the question is, where did it come from? Because you didn't read it, you didn't put on YouTube, you didn't put on a song. But let me tell you something, that song, that praise, that song fell deep in your spirit. And that's why it is right there. And so you drive and the song comes up. This thing cut down the desire to praise. Cut down the desire to be in God's house. I don't have time. So the lame man... The Bible says they took the lame man to the temple gate called beautiful. They put him there so that he might collect arms. When I read that, the Lord said to me, let me tell you something. There are many people that come to church expecting natural provision. They expect at the church the same things to happen that happened from Monday to Friday. And so you were lying there and he was asking the apostles for money. Because some people come to church and expect to just go along with the program of the natural life. The city apostle, what is it? The dung week is only. Silver and gold that they give you. He collects his gale. He is his colleague. He is a deep leg. As he normal good he, but he can be in. I go with men that I can help you. The apostle says, silver and gold that I give you. But in the name of the Lord, stand up. In other words, this is a place of supernatural happenings. This is a place of breakthrough. This is a place of turnaround. And you can't come to church expecting natural things. And so he cut down your desire to praise. But he cut, he cut and closed up your access to supernatural experiences. I must go now. As Nova Bay. I must deal with this one before we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Oscar can a lekker tijdje eet, maar jy moet met iets, hy is toe gaan. As jy net revelation, as application. Can I get a witness now, somebody? Faith without accents is dead, being alone. Isn't that what the word says? Woo! Cut down your desire to praise. Cut down your desire to be in God's house. But you must remember when he cut down your desire to be here, he cut down your access to supernatural happenings. And in church, normal things don't happen. Don't expect things to happen here that happen from Monday to Friday. Tell you, when you walk in here, there's supernatural power available. And the powerful thing about this man is that he came to the church in one way and he left in another way. Because you can never be in God's house and leave the same. Another thing that he cut down, hallelujah, brothers of my dear Notuma, is your desire to give offerings to God's house. Say, Rafa, you must have no prick in my hand. I rebuke every stingy spirit. I bind your filthy works. I cancel your influence. 
I uproot you. I tell you, I enforce my victory. And I enforce my authority. And I need you to know to quiet down while I speak to God's people. Shout amen, somebody. Yeah, your desire to give to God's house. Because you see, not being here puts you in a pattern of not giving. It makes you used to not giving. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Cut down your desire to give. But I don't have time. See, when you give, listen now. You're, you see, if you give in God's house, something I ministered years ago, when you give in, he cut down the finances of the church. That's all operation. But the people of God need to be matured. You need to pick this up. This must be a country. You come see Christ when you're here, Annie. This must be a country. Good hotel. As you know, the angels here. They can all the devil and the enemy in the sea. Come on now, somebody. You a believer? You matured? You come on with the Lord for a long time? Imagine your financial supply is cut off in your house. You tell me what's going to happen there. It's going to cut off your plan. Because now you can't, you can't even execute it. You can't even work out this way for the friction. Say, man, but I cool a box by your eyes. I know. I hope there's somebody that can help me now. I see me a friction as a cool box. And is that a cool box? Boo. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Because now you can't plan. I know what he did. And I need some mature people to listen to me. I need people that are matured, that have come on with the Lord for a long time. You are not a child. You are not a child. You are a matured believer. You should know that to run your house costs money. To run your house, these expenses. Now, listen to me. You need to think the same for God's house. And you need to understand His activities. This is why Paul prays in Ephesians and says, I pray. That you don't stay at the place of having faith in Jesus and loving the saints. But I pray that you understand the workings and understand your authority in relation to his powers. Oh, yeah. Because you bruma. I'm my that's my brother. That's family. I'm asking, you don't want to sit here all the time. Move on to the other side. Isn't that just a common or somebody? And so he cut down your giving. But this is what he cuts down because I don't have time now. You see, giving money to God's house is not an offering basket. See, that's the problem we have. We, we think of the money given is an offering basket. Not the offering basket that represents something. You taking money out represents something. You getting up and giving those offerings represents something. I tell you what it represents. It represents a worship relationship. And so when he cuts you down from giving, he wants to affect your worship. He doesn't only want to cut down your praise. He affects your worship. Because now you can't worship God with your substance. You see, when you give money, you do what the scripture says. I don't have time yet. You do what the scriptures is that you build an altar. You see, the altar in the Bible represents two things. It represents a place of sacrifice, but then it also represents a place of worship. This is why ungodly and other type of religions also have altars. Because the altar is a place of worship. It's a place that resembles, signifies, and illustrates a relationship you have with him. See, when you bring offerings, I don't have time now. When you bring offerings, the fathers of our faith in the Bible taught us how to give offerings. I'm not talking about other things. I'm just talking about offerings. How we cut this whole thing down. Cut the worship down. Okay. I was in a service one evening. I was doing four nights for a friend of mine. The last night, I was there, and I had my notes. And I was about to preach. And the Lord said to me, tonight, you don't preach. I went onto the pulpit. He said to me, you don't preach. Tonight you take up an offering. We took up an offering for two and a half hours. There was such a glory in that place. 
One of the things that happened in that place, a lady came from the back. She shouted, my wife, were you there that night? Came from the back, she shouted. She had a lump in her breast. She shouted from the back. She says, my lump is gone. Nobody prayed for her. Nobody laid hands on her. Because let me tell you something. When you build altars, God sends fire. See, when you start giving, I don't have the time. You see, giving in God's house is related to the manifested presence. Because God doesn't set empty altars alight. Empty altars have no fire. The purpose of fire is to consume what you give. God have communion with your sacrifice. His presence love what you give. I don't have time now. You see, the manifested presence is related to sacrifice. That's why the Holy Ghost was poured out after Jesus was crucified. Because the two things is related. I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to be crucified. And then I'm going to ascend on high. But you will receive power. Because the manifested presence always comes after a relationship with the altar when sacrifices are made. Is it a busy to feel? Is it a little for me? He cuts off our worship here with our offerings. The Lord gave Abraham a word. He told him. He said to him, listen. I love this. I, the altar is a place of revelation. Leviticus says, build an altar for me, for today I will appear to you. Because the altar is a place of revelation. And this is what happens. That when you give unto the Lord, you'll notice that the level of revelation in God's house will shoot through the roof. Because God appears by altars that have something on it. For today the Lord will, what? Appear to you. He says, build an altar to the Lord your God. And then he says, he won't only appear to you. He says, I send my fire to consume it. Because now, you see, places that understand giving and giving offerings is places not only of revelation, but it's places of manifestation. The power of God come into the place. I believe when you lift the level of giving in your house, more healings will take place. This has got nothing to do with money. If you think this is about money, you got it all wrong. But it's got to do with the representation of time. Representation of sacrifice. Representation of your blood. Representation of your possessions. When you give unto the Lord, you tell him everything I have belongs to you. When you give to the Lord, you tell the things that you have left over. You better watch out because I have a relationship with the Lord. See, when, when the Lord told Abraham, today you're going to possess a land. The Bible says, and then he built an altar. Because what happens at the altar is possession. Yeah, I don't have time now. It's possession. You take possession. This is what happened to Jesus as well. When the sacrifice was done, he took possession in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, what happened to Jacob is a powerful thing. The Bible says he deceived Esau. And the Bible says he was afraid to meet him. And then the Bible says he built an altar to the Lord his God before he met Esau. And the Bible says when he met Esau, there was peace. To Omi, so for him. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you did wrong? Where you know you deserve something opposite. But then you started to give thanks unto the Lord. And you honor God. And you have a relationship with Him. And the kind of things that you get, you're supposed to be fired. They don't fire you. You're supposed not to qualify. You qualify. You're supposed to be discarded. They call you in. Because let me tell you something. If you have a relationship with the Lord, God sorts out the rest. This giving has got nothing to do with money. It has to do with the relationship. But you know what he did with this COVID? He shut down the giving. Because he's shutting down your worship. He's shutting down your breakthrough. He's shutting down your access. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo. <laughs> yeah, this is what he's doing. Weet jy, hoe lang kon ek aan, meneer Heere? Wees het in die offering bak. Hoe lang sy aankom, meneer Heere? You get what I'm saying? Grow up. Because this is not about giving. Let me tell you something. If the Lord calls us, He'll sustain us. Any man of God, and I say that respectfully, because I love this church, but your giving doesn't make us survive. 
I say it respectfully. Because God, when He calls us, He will sustain us. The Afrikaans say, Hy wat my geroep het is getrok. God has a way of sending people from outside of the church to bless the pastor. It's just like that. And you know, whenever that happens in my life, the Holy Ghost always tell me, He says to me, the reason I'm using people outside of your church is so that you know that you never look at the people as your source. You understand that I called you and I will sustain you. And so the issue of giving has nothing to do with the church having something. But it has to do with your life. He shut down your praise, shut down your desire to fellowship, and he shuts down your giving. This whole operation of him with the season is a shutting down. But I need some mature people that can stand up and say, nobody shuts me down. Soos ons a maans gesê het, ek ken my staan in die Heere. I hope there's some people that for a paar mense can say, stand up your foot and I say for a paar mense, ek ken my stand in die Heere. Stand on your feet right now. I know my stand in the Lord. I know my stand in the Lord. I know my stand in the Lord. I pray tonight in Jesus' name as I desire for you in the season in which we live. But you don't act like somebody that's got no power. The Lord sent me with a word to Paul to tell you it's time for enforcement. It's time that you don't sit down as if you have no delegated authority. Enforce. Start praising the Lord. Start opening up your mouth. Start lifting your hands. Start clapping your hands. Start shouting like you used to. Putting on some music at home. Go in your car, putting on some music, don't listen to some junk. Put on some music, put on some worship and say, I'm here to praise the Lord. Lord, I honor you and I give you praise. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for you are my refuge and my strength. You are my strong tower. Lord, you are my ever-present help in times of trouble. Start putting on your praise. Come to God's house with, to God's house with expectation. Don't let the devil shut down your desire to be in God's house. And don't let him shut down your desire to have a worship relationship with the Lord with your giving. Because you are matured. You are not a child. You serve the Lord for a while and you know his devices. If any of you say to yourself, Pastor, that's a word for me. In the name of Jesus. I seldom do this when I teach and preach. But I feel a sense, Pastor. If you don't just bear with me. In Jesus' name. I'm going to do a prayer for people. They will try to shut you down. The Lord says there's some people in your house that shut down. You're the only one that's still active. You pick up in your house how this thing is shut down in the name of Jesus. And you say to yourself, I'm the one that's going to enforce the authority. You want to pick up your praise, pick up your desire to be in God's presence, and pick up your maturity to make sure you have a worship relationship with God with your substance. In the name of Jesus. Because he's not going to shut down the financial flow to the church. We've got things to do here. People need to get saved here. Small children need to come out here. They need to come on a Sunday morning and we need to prepare these things to make sure that we can minister unto children. If that is you tonight, in the name of Jesus, I won't prolong the service long, but I'm serious about this. If that is you, and you say, Pastor, I need this prayer. I need this commitment. I need what our fathers used to call a rededication. I'm asking you right now to come to the front right now. I won't keep the service very long. Just come front. Come to the front. I don't want to ask you now. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. You are mature. Just come to the front. You say, I need a rededication. In the name of Jesus. A rededication of praise. In the name of the Lord. Maybe you're still praising, but you want to take it to another level. You know yourself what you are like. But you find yourself not being there. Come on, somebody. Just come to the front. Come to the front. You know as you stand there, you say, no, I'm ready to enforce. I'm ready to enforce. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. Come to the, come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. In the name of the Lord. Even if you stand here and you say, let the devil know, listen, I am a praiser. I have a relationship with worship in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You are the enforcer. I'm going to enforce tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. In the name of Jesus before I pray. Yes, that's right. Come forward.
Come for, don't be shy. Don't be shy. This is not nothing with other people. It's got to do with you. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come to the front. Come to the front. In the name of Jesus. Yes, that's right. Just come to the front. Come to the front. You know he tries to cut you off. But in the name of Jesus, I'm not being cut off. Nobody cuts me off. The Lord did amazing things for me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Blessed be the name of Jesus. Yes, that's right. They're still coming. Come, 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 come. Come, come. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come. Come. Don't be shy. I've got nothing to do with other people. This is my personal relationship with the Lord. The church needs what we call a rededication, a recommitment. Say in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Everybody right there, close your eyes and stretch forth your hands as I'm about to pray for these precious people. Thank you for your time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to pray with me if you don't mind. Everybody that stands here, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Is that right with you? Lead you in your prayer in the name of the Lord. Moet ook met hom sag praat ek. Moet hom praat, jy moet praat as if you mean business. Kom en nou sag maar ek. Ek sê hom te fluister. Ek ga vir fluister. Hier hè, ek bid. Nee, ek sê hier vir fluister. I mean business. I'm here to rededicate my life. Can I get a witness somebody? That's right. I honor you. I respect all of you all. I'm a true believer and standing here. Because you realize, hey, this thing, I see this thing. Hallelujah. Raise your hand, family. And say these words in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I honor you, Lord, for you are my Father. Tonight, Lord, I confess that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is my God. I confess tonight, I've given my life to Jesus. I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm redeemed. I'm a child of God. My name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Glory be to God. Tonight, Father, I cry out to you. And I say in the name of Jesus, I'm standing at the altar and rededicate my life. Recommit my life. I confess tonight, I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. I'm a giver. I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. I'm a giver. I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. I'm a giver. In Jesus' name. Devil, you can't have my life. You can't have my family. Tonight I enforce. I say tonight I enforce my authority, my divine assignment. Override every demonic assignment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, put your hands together and give God the highest praise. You got tonight. In Jesus name. You can go back to your seats. In Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Father. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. The devil can use a cake means a crane. Can't get our family can't get our brothers and sisters. The devil is a liar. The Lord filled this place tonight with enforcers. In the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? I want to say to Connect Church, Apostle John Malak and his dear wife, the leadership of this church and everybody here, present visitors and everybody, those online, thank you so much. I absolutely enjoy myself when I come here. You can see without me telling you, I have a ball. When I come here, I absolutely enjoy myself. Such an honor to be with you. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand as the man of God comes.